cool. I used to read Word Up magazine. Yes, we did. Oh, my God. Elliot Wilson's in the building, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Oh, Elliot. Yes. There's only but so many people in the game that I could sit and talk to about certain things. And I, don't, <laughs> and I could, like, um, you know, it's just a shorthand. Right. I don't have to explain. You remember the guy from the Villa <laughs> Back in the day. You know exactly who I'm talking the kid about. from Brooklyn in the 90s. Elliot, how long have you been in this game as a premier hip-hop journalist? Well, as Biggie would say, I've been in the game since 92. I got in the game in 1992. Same year? Same year. Wow. But I didn't become a big dog till what? When I was at the Source? I guess, <laughs> when did I become a big dog? When did I become a big dog? Uh, what, 96, what? I went to the Source. XXL was 99. So I guess around there. And then, then you were a big dog. 2000s, I was a big dog. But you know. I was thinking about that today earlier. I don't know what possessed this thought in my mind. But I was thinking about... This is going to sound weird to say <laughs> no, out loud. Go for it. No, it's when people ask me, like, what are you most proud of? Oh, you know what it was? You know, I'm getting inducted into the uh, yeah. uh, New year, York. Right? The New York. Well, the, 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 I'm getting a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame and then the New York Broadcast Hall of Fame. Anyway, so they were going through my little accolades and stuff. And I was just reading them. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's nice. And somebody was like, wow, very impressive. And I was thinking to myself, you know, it's, it's crazy because when I was young and that stuff was happening, mm -hmm. you know, we had a lot of power when we were young. Yep. Right, we mm -hmm. were you were running up the biggest hip hop magazine. Mm -hmm. I'm on the biggest station, the only by the way, only hip hop, the station. only platform, and Playing not just music, rap music at three p.m. It wasn't just the <laughs> only radio station; it was just the only platform to Absolutely. really hear long form interviews, to really see your artists. Kind, yeah. I don't know, just daily. It was just your daily dose of what was happening in yeah. the culture. Right, I think we had so much ambition. I think to connect into Biggie, like what I liked about you when I first met Biggie. Because I first interviewed him, Ready to Die, Advanced Cassette, going yeah. to Arista Records, sitting and meeting him. His ambition, right? He wanted to be successful. Like, he made big records. He made big pop. Yeah. He made One More Chance Remix. Like, he wanted, he, he was an underground king, but he had ambition to be bigger. Yeah. He wanted to be successful. Like, a lot of our guys, we all came from that. We were underground, and then we had ambition to grow and be big. Then you Now you have a Jay-Z, you have a Nas, you have a Fat Joe. Like, we're all underground kids, though, from we were, New York. Everybody was young. Yeah. But when I was thinking about that, what I was saying is, like, we had a lot of power. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We like, wanted it. We, the, we had a lot of power. And I think <laughs> when, when people ask me, like, what are you most proud of? Sometimes I say all oh, the people I mentor to listen to this. But, like, I'm also proud of the fact that I managed that power well. Mm. You know what I'm That's saying? That's a great point. I'm proud of that because I think especially. With integrity, right? Maintain yeah, with integrity. integrity. And yeah. at that young age where yeah. I could have made, understandably could have made um, some bigger mistakes in terms of managing that power. I just wonder for you if you ever get caught in that in that ego of like I'm running the source, yeah. <laughs> I'm the king of the culture. Yeah, man, I felt like everybody had to give me the album so I could give it the mics, and if they didn't submit the album, I would be mad. Like Puffy didn't want to give me Life After Death in time, and I was going crazy. Like, how you not going to give me the album to uh -huh. review because I'm at the Source magazine? And like, I definitely did that. I also felt like back then, as a writer, as a hip hop writer. You know, if you wrote a bad review, people may try to find you. You know what I'm saying? So I kept a low profile. People didn't really know what I looked Smart. like. Smart. So I, but I talk about it in this piece I wrote for this thing, Word Up Magazine, Biggie Special. We're gonna, we gonna talk about Word Up. We're gonna talk um, about it. We're gonna talk about it. I talk it. about how my biggest regret was. I'm talking about listening to um, Life After Death. Puffy's playing the album. It's February. We went to Bad Boy. We heard an early copy of the album. So you and talk about this in the article. In the article. Okay. Being a music editor, source my dream job. I get to hear Life After Death pretty much a month and a half before it comes out. That's the other good side. We would get to hear things early. Yeah. And um, just realizing like more money, more problems. Like, oh my God, this sounds like the greatest thing ever. Like, how is this not going to work? And then like at the end, people took pictures with Big. And Big had the whole uh, broke his leg, little C's crippled me. Yeah. So he's sitting in a chair. So people would just like stoop down, take a picture with Big. But I didn't do it because I'm like, I was programmed like people can't know what I look like. Uh -huh. I don't take a photo, da da da. But now I regret it. I wish I should have took a picture with Biggie. So do you, you have, have a nice photo of him? Do with you Biggie. have any photos with Big? Not together, no. None? And I've been in clothes with him. We had the bass blaster, <gasps> Scully on and stuff. But that's so sad. Yeah, no. I had, that's one of my big regrets too. Is that I, I didn't take a lot of pictures back then. There's so many people that I don't have that I had such great yeah, we rapport didn't have with. Like that. You'd have to get a real camera. Or something. It'd have to be a person <laughs> with like a disposable camera or something like that, which would have been terrible. Your pose, fam. Your yeah, pose. Nah. Oh man, nah, I got I do, that. I, I have the that. picture that I used in Word Up. Yeah, you I have a great the Biggie shot. I have a great picture with Big. I have a couple of them. The other one's a little blurry. I, don't, I haven't really used it. I'll pull it off for something at some point. I have another one. It's just a little awkward. Yeah. And then I have one at a club. 
um, where you don't see his face. He's to the side, but he's served, he's like getting a bottle of champagne. Oh, that's dope. Jay sent that to me recently, I so like it was that. one that I didn't that's even dope. know I had. That's dope. I like um, that. And <laughs> yeah, so I like when something pops up and you're like, yeah. oh, it's me and Big at the club. Yeah, I'm so excited. I was at the club. I was at uh, some kind of outdoor club where it was the one where Pac came out with Big. I remember Pac and Nas were in the same club. And you I'm there, and I have, this, I, have, I have this like weird mustache. You're in the third. You're in the side. I'm like looking like I'm 19, 20, and stuff. It's funny. I was like, I was at that club too. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at it's me. Amazing. Look how cool I am. It's, it, imagine we had all shots of like photos with Biggie and photos with Pac and photos of people like that. It's, it, looks, it looks iconic, right? Yeah, but super. That's the thing. We were doing it too. Like I think we knew we were part of great moments, but to see how those moments, like your interviews. Yeah. You know, with Jay and those type of things, like how timeless they are. Yours too. It's crazy. Yeah, yours yeah. too. Um, so we we did this. Um, we thing. united on this. Ange. We united. We reunited on this. Me Go and Elliot talk. did. We're both contributors on the one. This 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 Ooh. Word Up magazine. This uh, what Ooh. what is the verbiage I'm looking for? Your um, special magazine collectors issue. Collectors it's a collector's item. issue. There's only gonna be a couple thousand or so copies in major cities. You it is a online. special. They brought this back for the anniversary. Um and to celebrate Notorious B.I.G. It's amazing. Budweiser brought this back and they brought us in to, to contribute to this Word Up, to this special edition Word Up magazine. Yes. Uh, and so I wrote a letter to Big. Um, Beautiful letter, Anne. Beautiful letter. Thanks, man. Elliot uh, wrote wrote uh, a, his, a, a story, a reflections. <laughs> Uh, Reflections and affection. CJ and Tiana Wallace. Yeah, shout out to the kids. Do you love seeing the kids? The kids are amazing. The kids were at my barbecue this year. Wow, CJ was turning up? We was turning up. <laughs> By the way, I've turned up with them a few times. <laughs> so I put that in the letter. I was like, big, I'd be out here drinking with your kids. Is that crazy? Um, we've turned up a couple times. Uh, well, I'm going to see, we're going to probably see CJ tonight yeah, at the yeah, party. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're so great. I, mean, I get so happy when I see like I see Gianni sometimes, mm -hmm. Andre Harrell's Andre son, son yes. and he's doing well. And he's working with Rich Kleiman and them over he's there. He's working with Rich Kleiman. Sometimes I, I, one time I was at Charles downtown and I saw um, Gianni and um, Quincy mm. Puff's kid. They yeah. were having dinner outside, and then they showed me so much love. I want to like sit with them and drink with them and be like, "What y'all doing?" I was at the club the other night and Puff. <laughs> Puffy was there, and the family had their own section. Like of all the kids had their did. own situation for the VMAs. Like, you were yeah, for the yeah, VMA yeah, one of the party. Puff parties, yeah. It was crazy. But I mean, the, the kids are Christian, grown. though, like, he's so like a little baby Puff, though. It's so crazy. No, he is his twin. He's like his twin. And then Puff insane. looked like he maybe lost some weight or something. When he first came out, I thought to myself, oh, he looks like Christian. <laughs> <laughs> it's the other way around for some reason. It's so crazy. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so this magazine came out. We're all super excited about it. What yes. a dope moment. There's a lot of reflection going on. Hip hop. What are your thoughts on Hip Hop 50? <laughs> Are you hip hop 50 out, Elliot it Wilson? It was an amazing hip hop 50. It's, it's it exhausting was. now. It's Are you hip hop 50 out? <laughs> a little bit, but no, I loved it. I loved that a lot of the great artists of the past got their looks, man. I was I was at the show. That was my favorite part. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. the, run, the, the people staying until 1, 2 in the morning to watch Run DMC come out and tear it down. Like, that was beautiful to me. Like, I, I like to see people that, you know, especially, you know, the artists of the 80s, that's where I was just a fan, right? Yeah. And I, that motivated me. Like, I always say, we did great things in the '90s because we were so amped to like carry on tradition and like yeah. you know big up this music that we love. Like we were, like, we were students in the '80s and yeah. like so being in the business in the '90s, it's like and to see these artists now, you know, because sometimes I think it gets lost in '90s being like kind of our Motown era, like what happened before 1992 per se, right? Yeah. And to see artists of the '80s kind of get these looks, that's what's probably the best part of the whole about 50 Yeah, years. I loved that too. All yeah. of them getting their their moments, Absolutely. even the even like. Paris One, Terry Down, EPMD, yeah, all the pioneers, Flash, the pioneers, obviously. yeah. I saw so many pieces done on so many of them. It was it was great to see the women of, yeah. of the culture. So that's great. I do hope that we transition now to like, okay, like what's the future look like more so, and like for who, sure, who are the fifty MCs I'm supposed to be paying attention to? Like that kind of energy of like, yeah. let's keep it going. Of like, you know, and, and what is it going to take to keep it going at the level? Or yep. to keep growing? Yeah, yeah. This Biggie lyric, it was all a dream, yep. is so. You know, you just think about how young he was because he had to be, what was he, like 20? 20s, yeah. Like 20, mm -hmm. but when he wrote it, he pr yep. it probably had to be 23, 24, right? Yeah, what gets what not said enough about him is the drive that he had. And obviously Puffy was a factor in it. Of course. Like their vision of like, take this to the next level. Yeah. On hip hop, right? We hadn't seen that before. You know, he's saying I'm blowing up like you thought I would. He's talking about Heavy D and Salt and Pepper in a limousine is a sign of success of putting that picture on his wall. Like, yeah. you know, you wanted to aspire and you wanted to achieve that. And he did. He did. Yeah. So amazing. And the impact, too. Like, I remember at XXL in the 2000s, we kept doing tribute issues to Biggie did because he was insert? still relevant. No, let me see. There's an insert. Look, you could do this. This is one side. Okay. And then that's the other side. Oh, that's hard. 
That's great. Yeah, the if you crown. guys can get your hands on this, it's absolutely worth getting your hands on. A little legendary moment right here. Absolutely. You know? Salute to the brands that did it right. Yes, shout out to good people. You know what I mean? So good shout people. out to good everybody people. at Budweiser. No, no, shout take, out to the I'm team at Cashmere. It's taking me back to my essence. Come on, Ash. Magazines, <laughs> baby. <laughs> no, magazines. You know about magazines, Ash. Are you feeling emo? I'm about to cry, man. Elliot, you're still, about, man. you're still very relevant in the culture. Ah, man. You Thank still, you, Go. Thank you, Go Talk, Ash. You still have... Um, <laughs> Uh-oh. You still have the ability to... Um, ruffle some feathers. Ruffle some feathers. <laughs> What has been happening with you in your in this in this pocket that you're in? I don't. Even, I saw you somewhere. Where did I see you? I saw you at Khaled's uh, golf event. Yeah, I took a little snippet of that and put it out there. I said I gotta send it to you. And well, you said like, to me something on the on the golf. Oh, I did a joke of how like bust not a joke, but the reality that Buster because I think people look at me like the honor is that I think a lot of times when they mention pioneers or goats in this business, Sway's name comes up, your name comes up, my name comes up. Right, as a sort of standard of media and whatever it looks like, right? Hip hop media. Hip hop media, like the foundational people, like that. So if you talk about who's the all time greats, our names come up. And then sometimes, you know, I get in my little ego bag and I want to be the best, and you know. But I was saying with Edge, it's kind of the analogy that Buster said that he wouldn't do a versus against Missy because there's so, so many similarities between them and there's so much respect that I could not do that. But I feel like I'll battle anybody else to be the greatest. You don't uh, want to battle me? Edge. You don't want to do a versus? I don't want you with it. I don't want to do with you. Do you want to do an Elliot Wilson <laughs> interviews ver Angie Martinez versus? They say you're going to pull a pot, they say you gonna pull the pot out on me. I will for sure pull the pot out on you. You be finished. You be finished after that. Oh, I'll take that. I'll lose a round. I'll take one. I'll <laughs> By the way, I have randoms. I don't even have the, even they don't even have to be the big ones. I got, I'll, I'll bust that Jay-Z R. Kelly joint Ooh. on you. I hit you with that Locks Puff joint. Oh, man. Oh, it's gonna be a rough <laughs> night for me, man. I have to some, I have to find a you got a few ones. Interview. I got some Nipsey hustles. You got, a, you got some Nipsey's. You got a couple got of good Drake ones. Oh man, you got Nicki some Minaj's. The Nikki's. I have a couple. The I got a I good stood up to the barbs twice. By edge. the way, Nikki cried. She cried oh, on one Nikki of mine. God <laughs> she made me cry. I pull out Nikki crying. <laughs> that I might be a, about that. That might See, be one for the kid. That might be the goat. Might be one for the kid. I'll take number two. <laughs> they be like Jordan LeBron. I think she's just debate who's greater, me or you. That should be the only argument. Everybody else should not be included. Because I say to myself, uh, why, why on earth would Elliot Wilson, the mm -hmm. guy who gets all the Drake interviews, who sometimes, Sabotage that, who sometimes I be like, could I get Drake? Can you come around here one <laughs> time? I had to say to myself, why would Elliot Wilson why? jeopardize this Cause I'm a dummy. I'm a big dummy. I messed up. What happened though? The the podcast girl. Yeah, she was yeah. funny. I'm not. I don't mean that. I, was, I wasn't up on her at all. I she's did not funny. Know about, I didn't know, I didn't about, know about her till Drake. Yeah, either. I didn't know Drake, about Drake. Drake put her on. I, I saw Drake had did another little funny interview kind of thing, and, and you got in your feelings. Yachty, and I was just like, yeah, it's like don't. Do, I'm tired of you doing that type of stuff, and it just didn't look cool to me. And I, you know, again, I'm making this transition of you know I left title. I'm back in media and full throttle. So I was like, I can say some of the things I want to say. Like I don't have to worry about corporate you know i have this job like this i get to say how i feel about things but sometimes you know my words come out a little harsh so i said somebody being mid or something and it just offended him and it just you know it should it offend from, him because you said it on social media that's true and i should have afforded him the grace of telling him how i felt before i took it or decided to take it public and that's why i apologize but you're Edge. A, you're, you're Edge, a you know, g doesn't like apologies Listen, like when jay apologized this is why on your show Everybody clowned him. Nobody yes. likes apologies in hip hop. You're right. I apologize. But that's why to Drake. I'm saying you know better. Even when you go I public made a mistake, on it, I did. still, I really, I, well, I, I'm trying to make it right. I, I had to mistake. think maybe there was something strategic going on here. No, somebody thinks there's yeah, some kind of method to my madness. I wish, <laughs> I wish, I wish, it, wish it was the case. <laughs> It wasn't. And, and for the record, Yo, again, you really just jumped the out record, the window. I really jumped out for no, because I have too much freedom now to just feel like I can say whatever I want. Granted, it was your truth. That's how you felt about That's how it. I felt. You didn't like. I, but I, by the way, but, I, th but I thought I, the little interview was funny and cute. I didn't think it was I anything wrong it. with it. It's, I didn't watch the whole I heard thing it's not either. Even on your YouTube's anymore. I don't know what happened. There, I but. only like the little clip. <laughs> uh, the little clip. What happened? He, he made her take it down. I don't know. There's a controversy around it. I have no comment. Did I don't you have something to do with that? Why does everybody think I have all this power? I don't know anything about it. <laughs> I never want power. I have no power here. I don't know nothing about anything. I like but. when I see Drake being light and funny. It doesn't bother me. There was another one that he did that was funny. Yeah, it was you on know. a bar stool or whatever. That was the one I was talking about. When he was at the strip club? 
No, oh, that was funny too. That, that was, was true. funny. He did don't move. That the freestyle he did. Was I great. like it. I love that he went to see Gabe. Scene. I like that. So like him and Yachty are besties, man. I and think he, I like Yachty's funny dry me. side. He's Yachty's friend now. It's over, man. I gotta get I gotta get Drake back, man. It's rough. <laughs> what me. are you gonna do? What are you willing to do? Hey, easy, easy, Edge. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no disrespect. I mean, an apology letter. Uh, I apologize, man. Time heals all wounds, man. I, I do, I do, I do. Like I said, at this point, like you said, did you apologize I've to had, him? I've actually done mm -hmm. six interviews with Drake. Did he reply to your apology? Uh, uh, F you, no, he didn't. He didn't reply. He didn't to reply. <laughs> Yo, he left no, you he on just, the Z. The public thing he did was after I already had apologized. He went on uh, academics page, and that's what he clowned me about being at Rolling Loud and yeah, covering the kids and running around doing backstage <laughs> interviews. <laughs> Everybody what? says my old Yo, ass should not do that anymore. You shouldn't, but listen, oh, well, you should. You could do whatever you want. Yes, but what you shouldn't do is mess with somebody whose pen is that good. Oh no, he's he's he's, he's, he's the he's, worst. He's also you have beef with Drake. People, it's like there's certain people, right? Yes, yeah. I would never in my life fix my mouth to say anything crazy about Fifty Cent because I don't want for the oh, yeah. rest of my life. Yeah, I'm scared of Fifty. Years. Edge Martinez <laughs> memes with with no heart. With like he has he doesn't care. I don't want no. Smoke he doesn't with 50. care. So nobody wants to smoke with 50. I don't know why, Elliot. You shouldn't want to smoke with Drake either because Drake is a calculated, he's a cerebral assassin. This is what I'm assassin. saying. He's not he's 50, but... He's a cerebral assassin. He's a cerebral assassin. And I, and I, I, made, I made a huge mistake. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, hopefully things get resolved. I keep hope alive. I'm a resilient person. I will continue to do great work. And hopefully the, it'll come back in my direction. We'll see how it goes. But then we, as you can speak to that, though. We have these. We like, love you, Drake. We have these we love tremendous, you, Drake. like, come on. intense relationship with these artists, and we go through our ups and downs. You yes. have to manage it. It's tough. Yeah, people you know? always talk about how, how. Who you down with, who you cool with. And but, who, yeah. People always are impressed that me and Jay are so cool. But there, there's been times where. That's what I'm saying. I, there, where he didn't love something, and I had to be like, I'm the talking same, about back thing, in the, the day. The same thing I'm being critical me and of. Nas had a, yeah. had oh, we a, know about that. We edge. had a public one. <laughs> now me and Nas, we are, you know what I mean? We drinking, a, a having <laughs> spaghetti at Carbones the or The thing I was critical of Drake at for this time was sim similar to what I did with Jay back in the day. Mm. I would hate when the hip our top hip hop guy wouldn't talk to the hip hop outlets. Yes. They would do the mainstream stuff or they would do cute stuff and they wouldn't sit with us. You have a valid if argument it, in that. If it's 50 Cent Kanye time, and I've done 8 million 50 cent covers. I don't get 50 cent Kanye for XXL. They go to Rolling Stone. Mm -hmm. So that was, and I would, call Jay, I would call Jay out of that. But again, I hit Jay behind the scenes and we would go at it. I didn't go publicly and call yeah. him out. So I should have afforded Jay. I just Drake hit, J I hit Jana. <laughs> Shout out Jana. Shout out to Jana. <laughs> I was, I'd be like, no, really, Jana? I was on, I was on, I used, I, I got a job at the source. I was supposed to sub, maybe back then you would always like sublet a place from somebody that was mm -hmm. a real 90s thing. So I was subletting for somebody in East Village. For, for anybody who doesn't know, it's like an Airbnb. Like a fake Airbnb. Yes. Back there. And then, <laughs> no, but then this, the woman reneged on me. So now I'm now I'm homeless. I don't want to go back to the projects. Ooh. Jana Fleischman let me sleep on her futon Aww. for like six months or something. Three months wow. maybe. Wow. Yeah. So I was in Jana Fleischman's house on the futon. I get the call for from people Jan, don't I know, Jana yeah. Fleischman is yeah, legendary. legendary. She Jay Z's publicist since forever. Forever. <laughs> Since forever. Forever, ever. Forever, since, ever. Since we argued about a Jay-Z Beanie Siegel cover. And where, not just Jay, honestly. Yeah. You know, no. she she's like the head of publicity at One Rock. One of the greatest and, publicists of all yeah, time. Super, Become her own mogul. Yes, we I'm love Jana. I'm on a futon couch. I get the call Sunday. Dave Mace, who's not even my man like that, calls me and tells me Biggie's dead. <gasps> That's where I was. I was at Jana's house? house in Brooklyn. Yeah. Wow. And then we went to the source. We had to go to work. We got to put together a tribute package for Biggie. It's surreal to me. It's oh, like, the same thing happened to me. Yeah, you got to do the work. You got to go. I was at this. I was at the club the night before. I was out the night before, and I had mad people in my house sleeping on my floor in my living room. You know those nights? Yep. Where you like nobody ever had that. Nobody knows what I'm they talking about. They weren't doing that back then. Nobody does that. <laughs> you don't have like a party in your yes. house. Everybody's drinking, eating pizza, Pass what, out on the floor. and See everybody you in the just crashes. I had mad couches. The There's You're mad people in my house. Not yeah. mad, like four or five. Like there was people there. Absolutely. I'm trying to remember who was there. I don't know why I remember that you like Unique. Remember Unique? She used to rhyme with Doo Up on yeah, the Mixtapes. Unique wow. was there. It was like a bunch of people there. Anyway, so um, yeah, I got the call too. And the same thing. I jumped up, jumped out of bed, went right to the station. I couldn't believe. You know, the same thing. Yeah. We were just like. Hey, do you remember this... I always say, what, am I exaggerating when I said like we felt like, damn, is hip hop kind of over? Like the spirit was just so. It was horrible. It was so dark. Like, it was you know, so dark. I was like in my dream job, being at the Source magazine. I'm the music editor. I give out the mics. 
this is my dream job. And I'm like, that guy. And now Biggie's gone. It's just like a rap's dead, and it, it's over now. It's, it's just over. But like, well, you know, we got it together. And then you know, I will. I love later on being XXL, and we're in the 2000s, and I started doing tribute issues to Biggie because Biggie was still relevant, yeah. right, in the culture. Like yeah. we would do these 2002 to 2004 every April issue. I would do a Biggie tribute, mm -hmm. and it was selling the newsstand. It would be huge. So was that your favorite time to cover? Your favorite because you've covered so many things and so many times. Well, yeah, the 2000 being editor in chief XXL. I think that's like my that's mm -hmm. my I call it my Fonzie era. That's like the cool era of like success. But I'm glad it didn't define me completely. You know, doing rap radar, and then now this whole thing now being on camera, people know what I look like. It's the total opposite of what my career was before. So since 2013, when I did Crown live interviews and being on camera, and everything's on camera now. This is like a whole new 10 year career of people know who Elliot Wilson is, what I look like, mm -hmm. who I am. They watch my interviews. They come, they say my full name when they see me, you know, it's, <laughs> Hey, it's Elliot Wilson. <laughs> Hi, Elliot no, Wilson. Like Angie Martinez is a brand. Elliot Wilson know. is a brand. Yeah. Like that, like the whole energy of it. So it's, I love all of it. I love it. I love the fact that we're still relevant. I love the fact that we still can do great work and yeah. you know, are timeless and you know, timeless is nice. Here. Biggie's timeless. Are you With still Thomas. inspired? Like, what's inspiring you right now? Man, look at your edge is good. Damn it. It's a... <laughs> is that a hard question? It's not a hard question. No, this is this is this inspires me. You see my work in a printed uh, product, which is mm -hmm. old school. Um, yeah, I, I was very proud of the Tyler the Creator interview I did this year mm -hmm. on Rap Radar. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> One time, Buster Rhymes cried on my show. I'm gonna find that. I'm gonna find that when you least expect it. When you hit me with that, uh, when you hit me with the Tyler joint, I'll pull out like a oh, Buster like tears. Buster crying Buster on the radio. He probably doesn't even remember that story. But yeah, I have DMX very emotional on the radio too. I have pull that on out on you. What I else got a, you got? I got NBA Young Boy this year, two point two million. On NBA YouTube. Young Boy. I that have. Works. Let that, me see. That's demographic. I mean. <laughs> Money bag, yo. This, this money one? bag, yo. One I just put in the can wasn't Ooh. wasn't too shabby. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's an interview of the year conver uh, conversation. Right I mean, there. it's in the, it's in the battle. It's in there. That was true. I mean, if we're talking about you know, oh, Ange, what the Ange, can you tell the people how I was trying to get you to do a podcast eighty million years ago? Everybody yeah. trying to get you to do a podcast. Yeah. And then now you wait. Now you're killing us with a podcast. What's going on with that? Congratulations. So you feel what that you're entitled to something? I feel a entitled. <laughs> and I'm a little hurt. I'm a little hurt. <laughs> Because when I was in title, I was trying to get Ed to do a podcast. We tried because a it's a different thing. It, of it, it didn't work yeah, out. Yeah, it's because it's one thing to be doing a podcast to do a podcast. Yes, I did this podcast because I had some shit I, I wanted to get off and some okay. things I wanted to talk about. So you I did a, it. You found your purpose. I with found it. something that I wanted yeah. to do, and then I put it in a podcast. It wasn't like let me go just do a podcast to do a podcast. It's different. Yo, so I could drop a Nipsey, and you could drop the Lauren London. Oh my God! See, so see how crazy our battle would be. Be the same. It'd be legendary. <laughs> Who else could even follow that? I don't know. Who would follow that? that? Lauren London, that, they, they, people come up to me and tell me that's that's one of them ones for Lauren you. London was definitely Lauren one, one, one of them ones. ones. Yeah. But some of my favorite ones are not always the ones that that's are. That's how it is for me too. Yeah. yeah. You know, there was like, I had, I had, speaking of, I, so I had a 50 Cent one one time, right? Mm -hmm. That everybody remembered. Curtis, that's where it came mm -hmm. from with um, Cameron, Cam right? So him and Cam are fighting, arguing on the radio. <laughs> so everybody always thinks that's the big interview. But to me, the same day, earlier in that day, Styles Styles P called in, and him and Fifty were talking live on the radio. Yeah, and this. to me, I loved that interview more than, than Cam that and, than yeah. that they moment. Turned it into a moment. The you moment that like everybody's radio, screaming yeah. about is not really the thing that I thought was so special. I thought what, what I thought was special was the calmness of Styles questioning Fifty's decision making on mm. certain things with respect, yep. but but challenging him. Yeah. And then the two of them. And then 50 defending, sir. I don't know. I just thought it that that was... It wasn't moved by emotion. It was more It like, was a doper yeah, conversation yeah. to me, but it wasn't the one that, it you know... It didn't start a whole rap beef, so... Oh, here's another one. I, I also love my Birdman interview, but then the next day, Birdman goes on the Breakfast Club and says... <laughs> So I have this great Birdman interview where I feel no like pe people could really get to know him. It's going to yeah. be so good. They're going to really get to understand him. And then the next day, he goes and says... What does Daddy he say? Beatrice. He said, yeah, put some respect on my name the next no day, more. and then that's everything. Well, like, those are great, like, you know, you ain't got the answers and all that type of stuff. Those are great interview moments. You ain't got the answers. But it's not classic. a great interview, right? They're moments. They're like highlights. They're great interview moments, but not yeah. a great interview. Like, I thought about that. Like, if I did a crown, am I supposed to say something to piss somebody off, and then they walk off? That, that'd be a great moment. Ellie Wilson pissed yeah. the person off, and they walked off the stage, and it would go viral everywhere, but that's not a great interview. It worked for Joe Button. He did that, <laughs> he did that with Migos. <laughs> that's true. 
That's true. Who else walked off? Yeah. Has anybody ever walked out of an interview for you? No. No. Uh, no. No. I don't think anybody's so. ever done that. But there was something that. else that you just said. Oh, <laughs> you gave me a great segue and I didn't take it. Okay, go for it. You said, uh, <laughs> the Kanye, you ain't got the answer, yeah. Sway. Did you come at Sway? No, oh, right? Oh, my goodness. Here we go again. We got to go, because somebody has to talk to you about this that I makes some it, damn sense out it, of it. it was, <laughs> talk to me straight, Ed. Talk talk, to me somebody got to talk to you straight about this. It was a little baby, and what's this guy, Rilo, where yeah. his artist is. They do this. They, the, the goat of the... Yeah the, complex, yeah, the complex thing has a thing about the goat of this thing, this category. That's what it was. When I saw you at Khaled's, at the Khaled <laughs> golf tournament, you said... Which is on Patreon.com, Ellie Wilson, right now. Who Ellie is Wilson the goat... Right. There you go. There well done. Plug. Well done. All right, thank you. Uh, <laughs> did you say, who's the GOAT, Ange? When you said something <laughs> to me, I was like, what are you talking about? No, I said, you're the GOAT, Ange. Oh, you called said, me the I GOAT? I don't want it. Like, busted, Missy. And I said, uh, I don't want to do a versus with you. But now we're doing the versus all day today, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, it was saying, like, the top media personality top media personality or whatever. And, like, I, I feel like I was the first to kind of brand myself the GOAT of hip-hop journalism. I think the line gets blurry because... And I get a little little chip on my shoulder because I feel like what I used to do doesn't exist anymore. The magazine thing. So, mm-hmm. so much of my Until greatness, now. Until, until now. Until, until now. now until this is, okay, I guess um, but, <laughs> but I feel like we used to have radio. We used to have press. We were different. But mm-hmm. now radio people are judged like journalists against me. Mm. So that's where my little disconnect happens sometimes. But I don't mind it with you, and I don't mind it with Sway, obviously, because we're all. But did something happen that I'm? Because something I made happened. I a joke, and I took. I did the Jordan line. I took that personally. The Jordan meme. I, when I saw the thing, I wrote, I, and I took that personally, and then people got offended. I was half joking, but did it, Sway, it did offend people. Have you spoken to Sway? Did I have you not apologize to Sway? To Sway? I, heard, I heard a. a Glocks, all Glocks now had to be uh, clapped me a little bit on the show. She but, did. Uh, she might have pulled the Glock. As she out of should. Me. That's her job. That's her people. Yeah. That's that's her people. That's what she's supposed but, to do. Um, yeah. Rob Markman checked me on it. We had a conversation. He's really cool with Sway. I, like to... I meant no disrespect to Sway. I have respect for Sway. You can't. It's 2023. You cannot come for Sway in 2023. I'm not coming for Sway. I'm just coming for my in own any way. greatness. I'm coming for my own greatness. I'll do a versus with Angie Martinez now. Damn it. I don't care. Let's do it. Let's battle. <laughs> I, it like, who can, why can't someone say they feel they're number one? I don't understand the world we're in anymore. Everybody's so mad. Everybody got to be goaded. Like we're a little goat club. Like who's the you're best? the one goading. You're the one. Uh, you're the one <laughs> upset about. Form. So then why can't I say I feel I'm the goat or go for that and say it? Why are you mad? People at me still get mad. I sound like Deion Sanders. Why are you mad that I believe in myself? Like what? Like that's something. I don't understand how people get in their feelings just because I think I'm better than. But did you say something somebody. specific about Sway? Is that no? I said and I took that personally. I did a little joke, the little Jordan meme. While everything he took on was like a, this is uh-huh. not supposed to be negative towards me, but I'm using it as something to like Got it. challenge myself, motivate myself that I still want to do great work and I want to be the best. That's all. Just leave Sway alone in, tw- Sway in 2023. <laughs> I'm going to go see Sway right now. I want you to I'm go, go see, see Sway, Sway right now. And, and apologize to and, that man. And by the way, watch your back when Heather, oh, when just, Heather I, B I is in there. Smoke, <laughs> Heather Heather watch your back on the walk-in. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what was going on with you. I was thinking maybe you were launching something that you were just trying to fire people up a yeah, little people, bit. Well, people do it. I, I did start this uh, new program, uh, Elliot Wilson Experience, on Patreon. Um, it's more like me off the cuff interviewing people like at the Khaled thing. I'm running around with a camera. No one knows Elliot has a camera. Yeah. What is he doing? What's he up to? So yeah, I was launching. I was oh, planning to launch that? that. Yeah, I didn't know that. I'll send you the clip. You see if you want me to keep it up there or not. I'll subscribe. Right. What okay. is the fee? What do I got to pay on Patreon? I think there's different tiers. There's different tiers. What's the tier? What's the there's basic tier? Five dollar tier, ten dollar tier. What do I got to pay to see me with you at Khaled's thing? <laughs> what is the tier I must be? Well, I'm gonna send it to you for free, but also yeah, I want to support. You get in there with that five dollar joint. All you right, get right. In the, you get in the club. Five dollars. Right. Five dollars. I get good? to see you it. Good, buddy. All right, I'm coming. Patreon.com, Elliot Wilson. Yeah, just having fun making content, man. Good for you. You know, I talked to I talked to you. I spoke to. Um, I'm gonna get me a goat chain tomorrow just yeah. to get on your nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just to, hard. just to get That's on your nerves. I'm gonna show. Yo, what if I show up? What if I show up on IG tomorrow <laughs> out of nowhere with a new chain? Good talk with Elliot Wilson yesterday. <laughs> My new chain. Light work. Enjoy this. Enjoy this new chain. Uh, oh my goodness. Who's yeah, who's uh, who's piece in the Word Up magazine was better, yours or mine? Oh, we'll let the people decide, man. Go okay. get your issues, man. It was you guys are gonna dream. have to. You, can, you guys are gonna have to online. check out the issues. Because you, you did the letter thing, though. Letters are emotional. Like you did the letter. They did like, and also you knew Biggie like more personally than I did. So yours is like real, like 
dear big and like it's personal. I just life. try to think of the things that like if he was here, what kind of conversation would I have with him now? Like what mm. would I be interested to talk to big about? I would want to tell him I just had drinks with your kids. Yeah. I would want to tell him, yo, w- w- like I just would wonder, would he be rhyming at 51? Yeah. Nas just put out all these songs. Like, what would you be doing? Jay Jay is doing this. Yeah. Would you be a billionaire? Probably, because you was mad smart in your young twenties. Get into that paper, yeah. So, <laughs> and this and these were your people. So, you know, how would that all landed? I, I, it would just Absolutely. be. I don't know. It just made made me think of all those things. What he would think about the time we're in, and and just kind of updating him on even where I was, yeah. where I'm at. It, it made me reflect on my own uh, career and where yeah. I am now because it put me where I was then. Mm-hmm. So then I did a little reflection on that, but then, you know, that so, was it. So then I just did the music journalist nerd part of like, let me just really dig deep into the music and what I really feel about it because I look at life after death, like that's still the standard of like an album to me. Like it's still mm-hmm. like the modern day great rap album, like the versatility of that, the storytelling. He could do the Bone Thug style. He can make commercial records. He can make hardcore records. Like the storytelling, like Life at the Death is phenomenal. And Ready to Die was great. And Life at the sure. Death jumped over that. And um, I always joke. Somebody, I could make argument that More Money, More Problems is like the greatest rap song of all time. Like, mm-hmm. how do you not love that record? And I, I, when I live in Cali now, nobody believes me, Angela. I do live in Cali. That's so if weird. I, if I land in Cali, I don't even and I know who you the, are. <laughs> I don't even know who you and are. And I put the radio on. You might California radio. They're gonna play More Money, More Problems. Like, yeah. despite all the drama we had. So I feel like that record, like, the verses are all perfect. Amaze, Puff, Big, like, more money, more problems. Like, So the music itself, man, to make that great music that, like, is still that standard, even going back to our guy Drake, I mean, when we did the Rap Radar, he was saying Scorpion, he was trying to do what Biggie did. He wanted to make a double album that had so many slaps on it, and, like, mm-hmm. that's still the standard. So you got to thank Big for that. I like the way you just threw in a final shout-out to Drake like before that. we go. We're going <laughs> to smooth this I'm out. I'm trying to get back. We're going to smooth this out. If I interview Drake anytime soon, which I might. Don't mention me. It's why she said, which I might. <laughs> what is going on? You have a flight tonight? You going to, what, where's the tour at? You put me on, I mean, you where's put me in this, at? you put me in this mode. I, I, think, don't... Yeah, I think I'm motivating ants to really just like deliver some kick-ass interviews you before the end of the be. year. You might. I like to come Do you in. think it's crazy how the, there's such a standard now, like the interview, like the interview's a big deal? Like the kids yeah, watch I try the YouTube not to, all I night. Try not it, to, uh, I try not to put myself, I, I don't, I don't like to play that way. Does it bother you? Do you ever regret that there's not video, it was pre video era that some of that stuff's not on video? Yeah, I wish it was. Of course, yeah, I wish that. Yeah. I wish I took more photos. There's a lot of things I wish yeah. I would have documented better. Yeah. But it's okay. Everything happens as it's supposed to. And it's still great. I got plenty of material for the verses, so it's fine. It's no worries. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta look back at what I've done, man. I have to have some more to take. To yeah, go you come. Ads, I expected a little bit. You know, you Same. got more. No, you got you got joints. You got, got joints. joints. You got some J I, joints. You got some. Oh, you got some joints. Thank you, Ange. And you got this. We got this. You should definitely get <laughs> Thank this. you to Budweiser for putting this together. Thanks for putting. Super Ange. dope. You they get you put us together. From Angie Martinez and Elliot Wilson. Come on. I man. mean, it's kind of. In, oh, saying, in Word Up magazine in 2023, that's pretty great. It's pretty hip hop. Wait, so where does everybody get this? Do we know? You, Online. Online, okay. Uh, well, I think it's Budweiser. It was all a dream. Um, the major cities, man, there's two locations in New York. I think Chicago, Detroit, L.A., um, Atlanta. 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 Atlanta's coming. Also, you know, I heard there's doing a new edition of it, an extended version of this, and there's other letters. D-Rock wrote a letter. Some oh, of, you know, shout I love out D-Rock. that. Love D-Rock. Yeah, I have a great D-Rock interview. I'm saying that's rare, Ange. You know what I'm saying? That's one of my favorites mm, out here. I'll drop you. that D-Rock interview on you, kid. You know what I'm saying? You, you might be a little shaky right mm-hmm. there. That D-Rock is... Nah, but D-Rock, there's going to be a new version of this coming out, I think, in the end of September. Um, and D-Rock has a, a letter in here and more content from the estate and the family. And it's Dope. beautiful and well done. The art design, everything is amazing. It was all a dream. One time for Elliot yeah. Wilson. Biggie. <laughs> it's Power 105.1.